Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my reaction video slash sort of TBR for the 2021 National Jewish Book Awards. <laughs> the National Jewish Book Awards were just announced on the Jewish Book Council website. Uh, this is uh, a U.S.-based award system that's been around for over 50 years, and it's grown exponentially in all of those years, and now they... Uh, judge winners and finalists in 21 categories, and by they, I mean that the judges are about 99 individuals from my count, uh, rabbis and other scholars and writers and that sort of thing. I've been on booktube for, I guess, uh, five, six years now, and uh, I've had all sorts of uh, Jewish reading challenges that I've set myself, although it's uh, altered and shifted uh, throughout the years, and I've gotten involved in other uh, non-Jewish projects as well. Uh, I don't really have a problem uh, reading uh, Jewish fiction, even if I'm not necessarily at the front list level, uh, but I would like to perhaps find a way to read more Jewish non-fiction, particularly in history and biography. Like, I used to read the Sammy, the Sammy Rohr Prize, uh, some of those uh, books, uh, including uh, non-fiction <laughs> and fiction. Uh, so that might be something I might uh, use this list for sometime in the future. Uh, also, more immediately, uh, in May, I'm going to be doing the Maybe Midrash Readathon, uh, which uh, focuses on uh, fiction and nonfiction around uh, religion. So I definitely will snatch up a couple of titles uh, from here <laughs> for that. <laughs> I'm also excited because uh, I actually, for all my whining, I have read some of the books already that have been uh, mentioned in the winners and the finalists, so I'll be uh, pointing to them. And I also have uh, several other titles in both fiction and nonfiction that have caught my attention, so I figured I'd tell you about them. I'm going to start with nonfiction uh, and uh, with the big... Uh, Winner overall, the Jewish Book of the Year, which was To Repair a Broken World, The Life of Henrietta Sold, founder of Hadassah by Devorah Hakohen. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, that pretty much uh, says everything on the tin, doesn't it? It's a biography of a really prominent uh, Jewish woman in history, so it's pretty much exactly the sort of thing I want to get back into reading more in Jewish nonfiction. Uh, uh, and it uh, won a really big uh, placement, too, so I'm pretty uh, positive that it'll be good. The next book that caught my attention was Beyond the Synagogue, Jewish Nostalgia as Religious Practice by Rachel Gross, which talks about um, Jewish expression that I guess is beyond religion, but it kind of harkens back to religion, uh, maybe more metaphorically, that instead of religion, uh, people turn uh, to other stuff. I think she's going to talk about genealogy and uh, restoring um, old synagogues and that sort of thing. I think it's particularly going to be a U.S. focus, uh, but I'm not sure. But uh, I'll be coming back to this book a little later. Next, I have People Love Dead Jews, Reports from a Haunted Present by Dara Horn, which obviously I was already intending to read because here I have it in my hands. Uh, I was going to uh, premiere this book in my next book haul, in fact. Uh, I got it over the holidays. Uh, it really caught my attention because I've been concerned about uh, how uh, anti-Semitism is perceived in the larger world, and uh, certainly it's become uh, prescient yet again uh, this week after the attack of uh, Congregation Beth Israel in Texas. Uh, and I think the stuff that uh, Horn would focus on in that instance would be less about, you know, the attacker or anything, but how the attack is perceived uh, in the media. Uh, I found myself wishing for her guidance again, and I imagine there'll be similar um, situations and different ones as well uh, in this book, in which I definitely uh, will be reading sometime soon. Next, I have the book I actually read in nonfiction. We have Can We Talk About Israel? A Guide for the Curious, Confused, and Conflicted by Daniel Sokach. So it's pretty fun, I guess, that the awards were announced now because I read this book just earlier this month. <laughs> so it was really recent read, uh, which uh, I talked about on this channel. I found it enlightening that uh, it came from a very particular perspective. The, uh, the author is um, the CEO of a progressive nonprofit, the New Israel Fund. And the book is very focused on Israel uh, in trying to... Uh, sort of take it to account as a democratic nation uh, from somebody who is, you know, in the 
perspective of working with grassroots organizations that are trying to bolster, you know, a uh, better, fairer democracy. And of course, it also does go into the conflict uh, and into the history of Israel and Palestine. And uh, even though it is actually very uh, Israel focused, that is a warts and all focus, and it is a giving um, consideration to the other side, you know, not uh, ignoring any other viewpoints or histories. Uh, so in that way, I mean, the conflict is so polarized that it's hard to recommend books, but I really do feel like uh, this one uh, is accessible, can be accessible to a large audience. Then we have Power and Emotion in Ancient Judaism, Community and Identity in Formation by Ari Mermelstein, which is uh, my nod again to religion and ancient history and uh, and the sorts of books that I think are either only available in libraries or for a hundred bucks if you want to buy it. But what can I say? I do, uh, even though they can be dry and uh, hard sometimes, I guess I do have some inkling uh, toward uh, these sorts of uh, academic books, at least when it comes to uh, Jewish history. So uh, it also does make me think uh, of my fantasy project in which I am taking some inspiration from uh, ancient Israel. So, you know. And the final one's probably the most uh, famous uh, in the uh, outside world, as it were. It's The Light of Days, The Untold Story of Women Resistance Fighters in Hitler's Ghettos by Judy Battalion, which um, is a uh, my nod, I suppose, to occasional uh, Holocaust reading. And uh, it's gotten big accolades in the broader world. And in fact, it is uh, currently in contention for the BookTube Prize long list. So... Uh, that says something about it, certainly. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's certainly an interesting uh, topic. I mean, I don't think we focus quite as much on uh, female resistance fighters. And uh, I remember uh, listening to an interview with this author talking about how she was uh, doing some research into someone else and then she stumbled upon some Yiddish paperwork about these other women. So very exciting how these uh, research rabbit holes can go. <laughs> Okay, and from here I'm going to go into fiction, starting with one of the books I already read, The Hidden Palace by Helene Wecker, which is in fact uh, urban fantasy, but very much with a Jewish focus. Uh, it focuses on uh, the myth of the golem and also uh, the jinni from, uh, you know, uh, Arab Middle Eastern uh, myths. But when I say focusing on the myths, I also mean that some of the characters are in fact golems and jinnis living in... Uh, the turn of the century New York up until World War I. Uh, this is actually a sequel book, so um, it can be uh, viewed as, read as a standalone, although it probably works better as book number two. Uh, the characters are really compelling. It's just uh, the, the writing is evocative. It really brings this world to life, which, uh, you know, feels magical in and of itself, this vanished uh, world of New York from, uh, uh, you know, over a hundred years ago now. Uh, but uh, I'm really excited and glad that it uh, got the recognition it did in these awards. Next, I have The Slaughterman's Daughter uh, by Yaniv Itzkovitz, which I uh, just recently held up on this channel as well because it came up in my page 112 tag, uh, my most recent one. Uh, this is uh, a novel that comes from Israel, but it is in fact about uh, the Pale of Settlement, uh, and it follows... Um, a woman who is in fact a butcher and she's going after some wayward relatives. So it's an interesting mix of nostalgia, but I think it's supposed to turn some of uh, those uh, stereotypes about Jews and the Pale of Settlement on its head. But certainly for those of us uh, who are Ashkenazi in a, uh, you know, stereotypical general sort of way, uh, this is uh, our history. Uh, this is sort of where Ashkenazim or a lot of it came from is this uh, Pale of Settlement history. Uh, so it grabbed my attention and I am thinking that I would like to read this one for uh, the Maybe Midrash fiction pick. And then uh, for nonfiction, I thought I might in fact uh, pair it with Beyond the Synagogue, which is its own sort of form of nostalgia, you know, in um, how uh, the American community, I think, uh, looks uh, toward uh, mythologizing genealogy, perhaps, or I don't know if that's the right word, but <laughs> it's what I'll go with, genealogy and uh, old buildings and all of that. So I just thought it would be an interesting push and pull with this book. So anyway, that is now my uh, so far official uh, reading list for maybe Midrash in May. <laughs>
The next thing I have is a collection of short stories, Jerusalem Beach by Ido Geffen, which uh, I remember when the Jewish Book Council reviewed this book, and I just, I don't know, or actually I think the first thing I saw was a, a uh, essay that Geffen wrote himself about how he heard this story about a beach in Jerusalem, which is like an oxymoron. You know, Jerusalem is a hilly, mountainous place. It's not a place for beaches, but apparently there is one. And then that became the basis of a, one of his short stories in this collection. So I grew intrigued and I already put it on my list as it is. And then I saw it come back in this awards uh, ceremony. So that's exciting, or this awards list, I should say. Uh, and anyway, I also think this uh, collection has to do with uh, mental health. So uh, double uh, whammy for me to uh, get some short stories on here and to read about mental health. This next book is another one that I just read for my Jewish book club, and uh, now it's on the list. It's Something Wild by Hannah Halperin, which I'm excited made it to the list. I think that uh, it's a really uh, searching and uh, very poignant and, and sad uh, look into domestic violence uh, and, uh, and into how it affects uh, family members. Uh, and there is a Jewish uh, content, which uh, I think I liked more than the people of my Jewish book club, the way that it, it informed uh, one of the characters' lives, even though it's uh, not like a very uh, pers consistent part of her life, perhaps. But uh, anything that might be able to bring this book to a Jewish audience is a happy, a happy, ha happy happenstance for me. So uh, yeah, uh, I definitely recommend this one. This next one is the one that's probably going to be the most recommended uh, everywhere uh, in the fiction list. It is uh, The Netanyahu's, an account of a minor and ultimately even negligible episode in the history of a very famous family by Joshua Cohen. This uh, won uh, the Big Fiction Award for JBC, and uh, it is also in contention for uh, the Book Two Prize Long List in Fiction, so it made a splash uh, in the wider world as well. And I even voted for it for the long list uh, in, uh, for the Booktube Prize, although honestly, other than, you know, a sense of Jewish pride, I don't know why. <laughs> I read another uh, Joshua Cohen book and I didn't really like it. And then I look back to this title and to this cover and it feels so pretentious and want to be clever. It annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like I really want to read this book, but maybe it's a reminder to myself that, you know, to give popular books a chance. <laughs> I don't know. I'll probably never get to it. <laughs> Another book I guess I have some mixed feelings about is More Than I Love My Life by David Grossman. Uh, I have mixed feelings because it's gotten mixed reviews, but other than that, uh, I'm a fan of David Grossman, or, well, I really loved his novel, To the End of the Land. I wasn't as fond of A Horse Walks Into a Bar, but hey, I still love To the End of the Land, and I like him as a thinker and, and a writer. You know, he's a progressive Israeli man, and uh, I'm happy that his voice is out there in the world. Uh, so that on its surface is enough for me to hopefully give this book a try if I find the time. <laughs> And finally, uh, technically this is one more book than I have on the nonfiction list, but I read two of these fiction books and only one of the nonfiction books, so it evens out in another way. So I thought I would uh, highlight Rebel Daughter by Lori Bonov Kaufman, uh, which I think is going to be a fun, fast-paced tale uh, about a YA heroine uh, during the fall of uh, ancient Israel, uh, you know, the fall of Jerusalem uh, in 70 CE by uh, the Roman army. So this is a very Jewish inspired YA fantasy twist, or, or actually not YA fantasy, but uh, that's my Freudian slip because as I said, uh, my own uh, fantasy novel takes a lot of inspiration uh, or some inspiration at least from ancient Israel. So that as well makes me uh, want to read this book. And I also just, uh, Enjoy very Jewish-inspired uh, YA fantasy, especially when it's not about the Holocaust. You know, I'm selective when it comes to the Holocaust, really. Uh, you know, I definitely want to keep it in my sights, but, you know, I only want to read so much at a time. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> So that about covers it for me now. Uh, you can find links to all of the books I mentioned down below, as well as more information on the National Jewish Book Awards and uh, particularly all of the winners and finalists this year. Hopefully I'll be talking about some of these books after I read them in future occasions. I am very excited to have a maybe Midrash readathon set up for myself already. <laughs> 
I'm hoping that Steve and Felicia and uh, Jason uh, get back to that readathon as well because it's really their baby. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you will see me back on this channel uh, in the next couple of days to do my uh, aforementioned uh, January book haul video, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>